Welcome to our Cobblestone Collective workshop. We love putting on workshops for educators and have gone crazy with that over the last 20 months. But we're here today to really talk about a subject that's going to become so important in Alberta in, in just a few short months, and that's computer science. And so uh, we're going to be getting started with CS first. And I just want to take a moment to remind everyone that this workshop will be recorded. Uh, and as well, as we're going along here before we begin, I just want to take an opportunity to acknowledge the traditional lands and uh, territories on which we gather here today, uh, the meeting grounds of many um, Indigenous peoples who've shared this land we call home. And so I'm fortunate enough to be here on Treaty 6 territory, a treaty of friendship and peace. And I hope that wherever your footsteps take you today, that you take a moment to recognize those who've walked before you and share this land. So with that, we have our resources uh, in the chat for you as well. And you can see Kim has it for you on the screen, uh, getting started with CS First. And take it away, Kim. Well, thanks, Trish. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kim Polishuk. I am a digital literacy consultant out in Ontario. It's a little bit later for me after the school day is ended. Um, I myself am um, learning and working on Treaty 13, the land of the Haudenosaunee and the Wendat and the Atishnabe and the Chippewa. And I feel very privileged to be able to do that. Um, I'm so excited that I have Trish here with me because she is a CS First guru. So you're getting two for the price of one right now. This is really, really great. Um, but we are going to kick this off. So thanks to the Cobblestone Collective for having us here today. And a big thank you to um, Google because this whole program is free from Google's CS First program. All right, you guys can see my screen okay? You're all good. All right, so let's see. This is our plan for today. We're going to jump into this program called CS First. We'll explore what it is. We're going to leave you with some helpful resources. We're going to create your accounts. We're going to show you how your students are going to log in, show you how you can um, manage your students' work in this system. And if we have some time, we'll even get you playing in a little bit of coding inside CS First. So out of curiosity, um, did anybody want to drop in the chat if you've ever seen CS First before? on a scale of let's say one to three, never seen it before. I've seen it, you know, maybe a little bit and I've used it. Maybe just drop that I in the I love the fear of it. <laughs> that was not in the scale page. <laughs> Take your own scale. I okay. love that question, Kim. I feel like that was me the first time. The first time I saw CS First, it was at a teacher's convention. So I'm like, this is great, this is awesome. And then it was like in the back of my mind, I think for another year and a half, two years, Same before I actually tried with students. Yeah, because when it first started, it was so long ago and it was so framed so differently. And now yeah. it's this whole great interactive self-student paced program. I love it. Okay, this is great. I'm so glad. Thank you for sharing in the chat. So why don't we just dive in by letting you know that we have your backs. So don't worry about everything that we're going to do today. Yes, this is being recorded, which I love, but also in this slide deck, we have a resource for you that you can take away, which is a step-by-step -step teacher's guide in English and French, so that you can go back and review everything we've done with the video, with these slides, or with the resources linked in them. So what is CS First? It's kind of like a learning management system for the coding projects that your students are going to do. And even more than that, it comes with a fantastic curriculum that is filled with self-paced, self-directed modules that students can work on to scaffold their learning and, and, and really show you what they can do. So let's get you started. We're gonna, we're gonna savor as much of this time as we can. What I would love for you to do is in Chrome, I would love you to go to this link. It's the login page for CS First because we're gonna get you signed in right away, creating your accounts. And when you go to this page and log in, you're going to select a teacher. It's really important you do select I'm a teacher, even though we're in a learning stance right now and you're in the role of a student, you as yourself in your role are a teacher. So please select that option. And if it is your first time ever there, you may have a short survey to complete. You can get through that really quickly. And then do me a favor, let me know when you can see your teacher dashboard. It's not gonna look like this picture, it's gonna be sort of, you'll see the stuff on the left-hand side here, and this will all be empty. There might be a big button in the middle that says, uh, create a class. I'm gonna log into mine on my screen while you are logging into yours. 
Let's see, I'm just gonna go to CS first. Might have to log out. Oh, good. All right, I'm going to select, I'm a teacher, the big blue bird. It's going to ask me to confirm my school Google account. So I will click on that and do select your school Google account. And then I have my dashboard. So do me a favor, once you have had a chance to get to this stage, and again, your dashboard isn't going to look like mine unless you've already used it once before and maybe you've created a class, but you don't remember how you created it and that's totally fine. I did that at the beginning too. You know how when you, when you go to a workshop and you, and you think you've never done it before and you log in and you're like, wait a minute, there's work in here and you totally forget that you ever did it at any point in your life. I've done that before. So many times. I want to say the first time I ever used Google Classroom, like years You had a ago, classroom sitting in there, I, right? I was like, what did this yeah. happen? Oh, okay, Jody. So um, I wonder, is everybody here from, if, if you're having trouble accessing CS First, it could be because your school, your district's um, IT department has to turn it on in the Google Administrator console. So that is something you'll need to contact your IT department and request that they, it's, it's like flicking a switch. They just have to turn on the switch and then you'll have access to it. And I understand you probably can't do that right now. So if that's the case, I would suggest going to a personal Gmail account and seeing if you can, or what do you think? I don't, think, I don't even think you need to, because to be honest, the, if you don't have it yet, because CS First is protected to educational domains. Oh, that's true. So if you sign with personal and things, it won't, it won't work. What I would say today, the classroom setup portions that Kim's going to show you, watch that part. But all of the resources, lessons, everything else in here, you will be able to use today without signing in. So don't worry about that part. I'm going to put just the general CS First page on link in here for Perfect. you in the chat, and then we'll just keep going. Perfect. Out of curiosity, was anybody able to create their um, account and log in? It doesn't look like anyone's in the chat with that. So we might be okay. watching. Well, you know what? That's okay. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go oh, ahead. Mem's and got it. Mem signed in. Yeah. 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 Mem and are good. Yep. Oh, excellent. All right. So no problem. Trish is going to drop in a link so that when we start to dig into the fun coding, you'll be able to take part in that. I'm going to model for you also so that it's in the recording how to create your class. So to create your class, you're going to click on this blue button in the bot in the top left corner right over here. And you probably also see a big create class button in the middle if it's your first time there. And I'm just going to select create a class. Now there's a few different ways to create a class. The first way and the, the, the kind of quickest way is if you use Google Classroom to link your CS first class to that Google Classroom. Out of curiosity, does anybody in here use Google Classroom with their students? You want to drop that in the chat? I see thumbs up. That's great. Okay. So, oh, perfect. So this is probably going to be the way that you want to do it. But of course, I'll show you a different method. So I've created a Google Classroom right here. And all this does is when I say, yes, I want to create a CS First class using the student roster from that Google Classroom. That's all it's doing. It's gonna say, suck them all in. And then all of those students are automatically invited. And then I'll click import. If you don't have a Google Classroom, no problem. You'll just click on this link at the bottom, create a class without using Google Classroom. You'll give your class a title, like awesome coding, whatever you wanna call it. And then just select Google Workspace for Education Accounts. And then it will give you a special unique link that you can send to your students. They just click on it and it will take them to a login page. But for us, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna create it with Google Classroom because I have some fake students ready to go. So let's go ahead and import. The class is spinning and look how quickly it is. There, I have a classroom. And if I click on this, going into my classroom, 
this is what the class looks like. Now I'm going to jump over to this people tab for a second to show you. These are, don't you love my students? You like my student roster? I have the best class. Look at those kids. Um, these students have all been invited to join this CS First class. And I'm going to show you what happens on the student side of things when I now have a student that's saying, okay, I'm ready to code, where do I go? I'm going to scroll to the right. If you see a yellow bar at the top, that means, and you can still see that now, right? I'm sharing the right screen, perfect. If you see a yellow bar at the top, that means I'm in a student account. And who's, who am I today? I am Ferris Bueller. I am Ferris Bueller today. This is the student account. So as a student, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to CS first. Nope. Yeah. I'm going to go to CS first, select I'm a student. And this is how my kids are going to log in. They're going to sign in with Google, confirm their school account, and then sit back because just like when they're invited to join a Google Classroom, they are invited to join a CS First class. And you can see right here, all I have to do as the student is, is read this. Oh, there's my class, there's my teacher. I'm gonna join the class. So as a student, it's that simple. If I had created the classes with um, a Google account, as opposed to a Google Classroom account, then the students would see, a, they'd get a link and you just have to give them that link and it's the same thing. They'll click on that link, they'll confirm their Google account and then they're right in and they just have to join the class. So it's really quite simple for the kids to get in. Let's see here. All right, any questions so far before we keep going, Trish? We're good? It's, it's all quiet in the chat. I'm throwing some things in there. The one thing I just did put is that it is a two-step verification process with your IT department. Step one is open up and turn on the CS first. The second step of verification is the Google Classroom and, and Google Workspace connection. You, you don't have to have both and some divisions don't turn on both. So it is two things there to do the super easy method that uh, Kim has shown you. All right, so now let's go back into our CS First class. So I'm in my class and you can see I'm on the units tab. There's a units tab and a people tab. I have no units. So this is what I love. This is that, that part about CS First that it gives you a curriculum that you can work through and connect to your provincial curriculum when that rolls out. I heard you say there's a new curriculum rolling out. So this will really be a fantastic resource. To add a unit, it's pretty, pretty intuitive. You just have to click add units and then you can scroll through all of the different curriculum options. So we have some options. We have one hour lessons, which are wonderful. And you can see they indicate the difficulty level right on them, how many lessons there are and approximately how long it will take. We have some hour of code lessons. We might try this one. And then we get into our multi-day units. These are really well-developed units. They take much longer. They, they, can, they can take um, up to eight hours. And to be honest, they can really take more than that. You can stretch it out as long as you want to because there's always room for growth. And again, they tell you the level of difficulty. So to add one of these to a class, and I'm gonna go ahead and add animate a name. If I want to assign this unit to my student's class, all I'm going to do is click add to class. And then it will ask me, hey, Kim, which of your classes do you want to add this unit to? So I can assign it to more than one class if I want to. For now, I'm just going to assign it to my class that I just created and add to class. I'm going to leave it here for a minute. If you had a chance to create a class, let me know if you have had a chance now to add a unit to your class. And if you did, what unit did you choose? 
Let's see, Lily, what grade would this be ideal for? CS First was designed with grades four to eight in mind, but I'm going to be honest with you. I've used CS First with younger grades as well, grades two and grade three. And in Ontario, we're now promoting CS First in grades nine and 10, because now in grade nine, there's a coding curriculum. And this sort of scaffolded um, approach to the coding curriculum is really helpful to give students a foundational understanding. No problem. I'm gonna go ahead and close this window. I'm not gonna create a Google Classroom assignment right now because if you didn't connect it to Classroom, you could always do this later. And to be honest, I prefer to create my own Google Classroom assignments later. I don't like to do it this way, totally can, not a problem. So I'm just gonna view the class. So now when I'm in my class, I can see the unit that I have added. <clears throat> yes, so memory. So in, in our district in Ontario, it, it's just, it is the same um, restriction, which is why we have to seek parent permission, parent consent first. Um, we provide um, parents with families with information about the tool, its educational uh, rationale for using it. And then we do get signed informed consent and then students and teachers are able to use it in our district. So here I am on the unit page and now what I see is the unit that I have added. I have added animate a name. Now let's take a look at what we see a little bit more specifically. I can view the unit, which we'll do in a minute. I can view some materials that the unit Come, that come with the unit, some extra resources. On the right hand side, I can see what videos have my students watched. I'll show you what those videos are in a minute. I have access to any of the projects that they're working on for this unit and survey results. So let's take a look at what this unit means when it says view unit. I'm gonna view that unit. So this is what a CS First unit looks like. The title at the top, again, it tells you the difficulty level, the number of lessons, and the time it might take to do it. And as I scroll down, I have three tabs. I have lessons. So what lessons are involved in this coding? Examples, I love this page. This is such a great page to start off with exemplars for your students. Let's see what's possible. By the time you finish this unit, look what you might be able to accomplish. And so there are examples down here of CS First projects created by students so that your students can see um, exemplars. And one of my favorite parts, Kim, because I think it's teachers were terrified to, to teach this, but to think that we have to make the example or make it work in order to do this with our students, that's yeah. massive to just have those actual working coded examples for students. You don't have to make them. Exactly. And Mildred, thanks for asking that. You do not have to create the assignment in Google Classroom. You can do that on your own later, which is why I sometimes prefer to do. It gives me an opportunity to add additional information that way. So you can skip that step. You can just click view class. And finally, in each unit, they have materials. Now, this part is so lovely because some units come with, most of the units come with lesson plans, but some come with solution sheets as well. So examples of what the code might look like. So I'm gonna go back a minute because I think there are some people diving in here. I'm gonna go back to my dashboard and I'm gonna show you again how to get to that curriculum. Anytime you wanna go back to your dashboard, there's that button right at the top, sort of takes you back to the homepage, back to the start. I can jump into my unit by clicking on its banner or I can go right up to the top here to the curriculum. Same destination. I can click on curriculum and I'm brought right back to all of those different units. Again, I can add any of them to a class or I can just go ahead and view. I'm gonna take a look at it. So let's see how CS First structures their units. 
as I scroll down and I click start, each unit comes with a video at every step of the process. And these videos are Googlers who have uh, included instructions teaching the students how to use Scratch for CS First. Have, has anybody here used Scratch before by any chance? Regular Scratch? Yeah, Mildred's nodding her head. Yep, that's great. So let me explain why Scratch for CS First is different than regular Scratch. Scratch for CS First is a secured, locked down environment. So students are unable to see each other's work Students are unable to access a public gallery. There's no social connection beyond their work and the teacher seeing their work. It's a secure, safe environment, which is why Scratch for CS First is ideal for public school education or, or for education. So here I am at the start. I would watch this video, which is an introduction to this unit. And as a student, I would click on starter project. When I click on starter project, a new tab opens and scratch for CS first opens. This is the scratch dashboard. This is the scratch dashboard. So what I have here, I would, I want, I'm curious to know, because I would love to take this opportunity to see if anybody is able to get into Scratch for CS first. Let's see here. So if you are able to, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just sort of keep demoing what is possible with Scratch for CS first. Is anybody able to click on one of those starter projects in any of those curriculum units? Mildred is in one, that's wonderful. Great. Don't be shy, you can um, unmute and say yes as well. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's why also why I love that we're recording this because once it is turned on in your district, you can then go back and play and pause us. So the first thing I always tell my students is give your project a title. Otherwise you will have a bazillion projects that called untitled dash number. So I'm just gonna call this um, my animated name my animated name. So once I've given it a title, I can now use the blocks on the left-hand side of the screen to code my name. Now, my name doesn't have an A in it. I, I'm, my name is Kim, so I need to add a different set of sprites. These tools are called sprites, so characters. These are the things that you're going to be coding. So to add a new one, I'm going to go down here click on the cat at the bottom and choose another sprite. I can upload a picture if I happen to have something on my hard drive, or if I just click on the cat, I can choose any other sprite that I want. Now I'm gonna go and filter for letters at the top here, and I'm gonna grab a K. I'm just gonna drag it over here. I'm gonna get rid of the A by clicking on it and selecting the trash. And I'm going to add in an I and one more, an M. It's helpful that I have a short name for what it's Time saver. I know, me, I love it too, Trish. It, yeah, and you know what? It, it allows kids also to, it's a, good, it's a good starter project at the beginning of the year because you can get to know your kids. Like, what are their interests? What are their hobbies? Because they can code each letter in a way that um, reveals who they are. I've also done it with like, you know, yeah, okay, a grade four kid who's never coded before ever. But I've given this to uh, grade 12 computer science students and they actually turned it into like, like NASA level video games, this, this same oh, project. Awesome. So there's any entry level for any of these projects, which I think is, is massive in our classrooms. Yeah. So as I go back over here, I've clicked on starter project. What I'm going to do is scroll down and I have all of these add-ons. Each one of these add-ons gives detailed step-by-step -step video instruction 
for how to code. So for example, if I wanted to change the color of my sprite, what I get is a video. In this video, you'll make a letter change from a Googler. And I'm not gonna show it to you, but I'm just gonna drag it through. They walk the kids through step-by-step step, everything that the child needs to do to code changing a color. I'm just gonna sort of scroll through it. It shows how you drag those blocks on the screen, how to test your code, the importance of getting an event to run the code, walks them through it. It's about a minute and a half just over that. And then at the end, it says, now it's your turn. And the video stops there and it invites the child to go into their Scratch for CS First platform and try it out. So I'm gonna take a look at this. I'm gonna add in a change color block and an event block. So I'm gonna do it right now. So I need to go to looks, which are purple. And I'm gonna look for change color. Here it is. And I, I know that I'm coding the M right now because the M is selected and highlighted down here. And I see a faded out M in the corner of my coding platform, my coding space. That's how I know what I'm coding. So if it's gonna change the color, and then it told me, if I just jump back to my video, I need an event block. So every time I'm gonna use an event block, I'm gonna use this one instead. When I click the flag. So if I click the flag, nothing happens. So my, what am I doing wrong? What, it, what am I doing wrong when I'm using Scratch for CS first? I followed the instructions. I got an event block and I got a, a looks block and I'm clicking the flag, but nothing is happening. Yes, that's exactly right. You can see, if I zoom in a little bit, that these blocks are shaped like puzzle pieces and they legitimately click together. Like you see that, I'm not doing that. It's this magnetic pull so that when I drop them, they collect, they, they connect together. And now if I click on that green flag, every time I click on it, it's gonna change its color. Clear, stop. It's gonna change its color. to keep changing it there's a bug in my code so this is the kind of authentic experience your students will have they'll get a little bit of a bug and they'll have to try and code it and figure it out and maybe let's see here they can just keep trying now if i wanted to test out this block i can just keep clicking on it and now it's just going to change 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 that's how they can work with the coding blocks. I don't see any questions in the chat. So I think what I'd love to show you before we finish up is the other reason I love CS First as a learning management system for coding is because of the access that you have to your students' work. I'm gonna roll over here to be a student again. And as a student, who is I again? Ferris Bueller, Ferris Bueller. I'm gonna go into my class here I am, and as a student now, I can see in my class that I just joined, my teacher has added a unit. And the units that my teacher adds will be listed right on the front page right here, current units. Okay, great. So as a student, I'm gonna go right on in. It takes me right to the unit my teacher assigned. And as a student, I can click Start, and as a student, I can click Starter Project. I'll give it a name. And maybe I'm gonna add in the letter F just to start. Let's get a different kind of letter here. here we go. So now I have my letter F and I would start coding it somehow. Maybe I do uh, when the space bar is pressed, I'm gonna wait a second, and then I'm going to say hello for two seconds. So now if I try that, I'm gonna click the space bar and I say hello. 
So this is a student working on it, but let's look at the teacher access to what the student has done. So if I go back over to my teacher dashboard, right up at the top, and I open up my unit, I have a few different ways that I can look at my students' work. Number one, I'll click on projects submitted. So for my animated name unit, if I click on projects submitted, here's the student who has joined my class and underneath this subheading, I can see Ferris, that's me. That's a project that Ferris was working on. I can now go into Ferris's project and see their progress by clicking on it. Now I wanna show you very carefully, I am not able to edit his work. I cannot edit their work. I can only, you see it says it right up here, I can only view it, edits will not be saved. So if I'm taking a look at Ferris's work and I'm noticing there's a bug or I wanna give Ferris feedback, I'm going to use other tools at my disposal to communicate that to him. Perhaps I'm gonna send him a private message in Google Classroom. Maybe I'm gonna communicate it. Maybe we have a shared Google Doc where we go back and forth with feedback. Whatever feedback I need to leave for my students, I can't do it here. I can only see their progress. So that's one way. I would see every single student who has submitted a project or is currently working on a project for animated name, I would see them all here. If I only wanted to see one student's work for this unit, I would simply on this people page, click on that student's name. Now it's misleading because I only have one student in the class right now. But if I had a whole list of students, when all students is selected, all of the projects from my students in the class would be visible here. So it's a class at a glance. To narrow it down, if I just wanna see one student, I would click on that student's name. And now I see any of the projects that Ferris has, has started for this unit. But there's one more really helpful view. Instead of being in this unit page, if I want to get a student at a glance overall, one student overall, not just for this unit, because maybe I have four different units running, I'm going to want to see everything that Ferris has done, not just for this unit. Maybe I have a parent-teacher conference coming up and they want to know how Ferris is doing and his coding progress. I don't just want to zoom in on one unit. I want to see everything that Ferris has done. I will click on people and then on his name or on this clipboard right here. And now I see every single project Ferris is working on for units that I've assigned and playground projects. Playground projects are examples of work that a student has taken the initiative to start on their own without having a unit assigned to them. So how does a student do that? As a student, I'm Ferris again, yellow at the top. I can either jump into a unit that my teacher has assigned or I can click on this blue button and I can just go ahead and start a project from scratch, pun intended. I can just start a project, code whatever I want with, without direction, and my teacher will still be able to have access to it. So what I love about that is that differentiation piece, right? You've got that scaffolded support, self-paced, self-directed learning provided through those curriculum units where every step of the way a student has a video that they can work with to guide them. But then on top of that, if you have a student that's like, I'm ready to go, I don't need these videos right now, I wanna see what I can do on my own, they can go ahead and create a playground project and then you will still have access to see it. Before we jump out, because I think we're actually just about out of time, I want to share with you, all of that information was in our slides, 
This is a resource we have in Ontario, but it is absolutely something that you can use in Alberta. Just forget the left-hand side. This is a resource that Google has created on coding terms. You'll probably see some of the same language in your own curriculum at some point. And this is definitions of key terms, examples of what it might look like. And the best part is these images on the right-hand side are examples that Googlers have created. So if I click on it, it opens in a public example. And when you go and see inside the project, you will see the code that explains what that term means. And they have anecdotal notes on the code with additional information. So this is good for teachers. It's even helpful for students as additional exemplars. So that resource is linked in your slides. CSverse also has unplugged activities for those days when your internet is down, or if you just wanna get rid of the screen for a minute and try something unplugged. And with two minutes to spare, I hope you had an opportunity. I know this was a little bit fast and I know some of us are sort of observing and waiting eagerly for IT to turn CSverse on, but the good news is this is recorded and you have access to this slide deck, the step-by-step -step guide for teachers in English and French at the beginning of the slide deck and this recording. If you have any questions, please email um, help at cobblestonecollective.ca. People like me and Trish and all of us are usually on the other end of that. And we are always willing and eager to help you out with your questions, whether they're CS First related or not. And if you wouldn't mind dropping us some feedback, we love to hear your feedback so that we can continue to improve our sessions to, to meet your learning needs.